so so the five excitabilities what can you say a bit more about what each of them look like so for example the psychomotor one might be someone i mean they all have a million ways of expressing themselves but let's just go with some stereotypical ways okay yeah a psychomotor is uh you know just a excess Lots of energy of yeah physical energy yeah can't sit still um i I've, I've talked to someone who's studying it. it it does overlap a lot with what is now being called adhd mm. though i don't think i have that and i how do you define these things right the, the definitions are slipping around but yeah that you can't sit still uh and a lot of energy yeah um and, and or you can sit still but you need to do sports like you're driven to do mm. movement um sensory is just more stimulated by things you take in through the five senses mm -hmm. and that can be flavors you know i i will spend a lot of time at the shop at the mall that has the fancy teas and i'll just sniff the teas you know i yeah. get very excited yeah um i am snobby about my bottled water yeah, i can tell the I, difference i believe it you know, this, this, this super stimulability uh, but it can also be things like sensitivity to beauty. You know, if you mm. stop and you look at the sunset and you, you feel re compelled to remark on a beautiful sunset that everyone else just thinks is like, okay, yeah. fine, the clothes yeah. are pink, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And on the darker side, it's also things like misophonia, where you get yes. troubled by repeated noise or certain noises, or you get yeah. uncomfortable with certain fabrics. Speaking of smell, like I can't stand strong perfume. It always gives me a migraine. Oh, yeah. Mm. I sympathize with that. I don't have that, but I do have the misophonia. So mm. that's yeah, just terrible. And too. I feel bad about it. My husband knows I have it. And so he's like, can I eat an apple? I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. I don't want you to have to tiptoe around me. But he's... Like, it requires you know, negotiation. Yes. It's just like um, any personal differences. Yeah. 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 And to, to realize like there's nothing personal. It's just like a weird wiring in my brain. Mm. So, mm. Um, And so, okay. So those are the two the more physiologically obvious ones. And then the ones that are in the head, right? Um, the intellectual is drive for knowledge, concern about truth with a capital T. Yeah, um, yeah. Also the, the thinking about thinking, metacognition, mm. that kind of thing. Um, Curiosity about most things. Yes, wide range of interests, exactly. That's, that's intellectual overexcitability. Um, I would think it also relates to people being multi-potentialites. Yes, absolutely. I mm. think that's a, I think that's a big part of Another it. Another big word, the listeners, it refers to people who have multiple passion. They don't just do one thing. And we live in a world where specialization is encouraged. So that can make it really difficult for people. That was a big challenge for me too, you know? Mm. Um, so yes, absolutely. Multipotentiality, having pain over the having to pick a career path, right? Yeah. And all the lost opportunities when you have to focus on one thing. Um, and then you come to the emotional, which is like what we were talking about, uh, great depth of feeling in both directions, positive and negative, um, which I think is, this, you know, simple. It's and, 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 and easily stimulated feelings too. Like, uh, and, oh, I've also heard it mentioned, and I think this is, this is true complexity of feelings, you know, oh, yeah. somebody will just have a, a simple reaction to, um, you know, some, some bad news and they'll be like, oh, that's bad. But the you know, emotionally intense person may think, you know, leaping from, from detail to detail and mm. about the silver linings or the possible Absolutely. consequences or, uh, and so you have very mixed feelings about many positive or negative things. Well, the question I struggle the most on a daily basis is how are you? <laughs> so I think that intense people are always trying to find their tribe. I hear that a lot. And the biggest advice I could give is it sounds cliche but I'll elaborate on it is be yourself because you haven't ever been encouraged to be yourself and for a sensitive person like for me I'll just speak for me but I think other people will relate you may have been rejected before for the big feelings the intellectual curiosity that is a, a tedious to other people um you know that that you've been rejected and so I internalized that oh someone didn't like me I better hide that part of myself but then I didn't have very fulfilling friendships because I was always hiding the active part of myself and the thing is the people I wanted to find they were all hiding that too and so you have to show it or you won't find other people like you and that does mean that you will get rejected again 
but it's not because you're a bad person. It's just because that wasn't the right fit for you. That's a beautiful advice. I learned it the hard way. I hope mm. it's helpful to someone else. Because mm. my next, next question was, how can people find their tribe? <laughs> That's, there you go. That's you the answer. partially answer that. Yourself, mm. show, show what you, be the person you want to find. Yeah. Even if it means some people don't, don't pick you out. Yeah. That's beautiful.